Hey out there, this is Thursday, March 4th, 2021. And it is just about oh, about seven minutes before seven in the morning here in Northern California. Starting a little earlier than normal as I remember. And today, as usual, I'll get into a few different subjects. Now, um, I wanted to talk about why I bother doing this video series. And it's because I do give a damn. And I don't just give a damn for altruistic reasons. I'll admit that up front. Uh, it is also because I'm a selfish man. And some time ago, I realized that in this pursuit to find happiness, which to me is the most logical thing that we should pursue is genuine happiness because we should all realize that there's a pseudo form of happiness. It's the temporal, temporary, ephemeral form of happiness that only lasts a short while. It's, it's the one we can experience while we're here and imbibe in just all that the world has to offer us, right? Which is materialism, right? It's, it's, it's obtaining a lot of money all the accoutrements that come with the money, right? The financial security that's being out of financial fear. We all want that. I mean, there's a lot of things we have in common. We have a lot more as human beings in common than out of common. And it's very understandable that everybody wants to be out of financial fear if possible. So we strive for certain things to alleviate the pain, the burden, the fear that we feel from financial insecurity. So it's very normal, very standard among the human species to seek certain things. So we know we want to be out of fear, financial fear. There's a whole lot of other kind of fear we have to all face across the board. Anyhow, organically speaking, Diseases, natural disasters, death, harm of loved ones. There's just a, a multitude of things that are organic. They're just there from birth. They're just things we all have to face, and we know from a very early age we have to face all these horrors that they're inescapable for any human being. So fear is one of those things we all disdain. We don't want to be in a state of fear. And if we can mitigate that, if we can eliminate it even, we will pursue to do that, and that's a good thing. So it's understandable that we love money because money we see as the key to being out of this financial fear. Again, this is the form of temporal happiness that we find in being financially secure. Because along with financial security comes a sense of financial freedom. That you're not bound, you're not burdened, you're not chained by financial woes and worries. So there's a degree of freedom that comes with it. Now that gets compromised because people, they own a house and they think, hey, it's so great that the value in my house has gone up and... I've got more equity, you know, it's worth a lot more than I paid for it, for example. And, and in their minds, in the short term, they think of that as good because now I can go out and essentially buy a new car and I just, hey, I just, I'm paying even less than the mortgage I was paying before and uh, this is fantastic. I'm enriched. I'm, I'm a richer human being because of the equity in my house that went up. So to me, that's a good thing, you see but they're not considering the long-term effects or even the short-term effects. Let's say they said they got an inkling to move to Key West, Florida, or Honolulu, Hawaii, Maui, Hawaii, uh, wherever, Kauai, uh, wherever you want to move. Maybe you want to live in San Diego, California, 
okay? Wherever you want to live, Miami Beach, Florida. I mean, I don't know why people want to move to these colder regions because, I don't know, I was born in Southern California, and this Northern California climate, it's a little cool for me, let me tell you. Uh, if I was homeless and I didn't even have a car to sleep in, I'd be the hell out of this area. I'd be heading south, believe you me. Or I'd be catching the next freighter to Hawaii, okay, doing something. But uh, just to survive. So, But I want people to understand and be able to differentiate in their minds between imposed fear and the fear that's across the board that we all have to face. And the imposed fear that's selective and exclusive and it picks on people, it's biased, it's discriminating, is through monetary means. This is how it's imposed on the people. And when I talk about who's at fault here and why it's so important to understand this and who to blame and who not to blame, you must fundamentally understand when I talk about the uppermost echelons of power, I am not speaking of the president, okay? And I'm not talking about the pope, okay? I'm not talking about even the Congress and Senate are secondary. Any, the money printers, who the, the, the Antichrist du jour, whoever the Federal Reserve chairman is, okay? Or the pope, I call him the Antichrist, too, because he puts a stand in place of Christ. But for worldly, secular people, the chair, remember how we used to call Alan Greenspan? He got that, the nickname, uh, he was just the, affectionately called the Fed. You know, he's the Fed, Alan Greenspan. We love him. I mean, he's enriching us. He's working with the investors here on Wall Street and all is well. And uh, he's going to keep things chugging along in this trajectory for us. He's a good guy. We, we like the Fed, you know, so... But uh, I am talking about people in shadowed positions, hidden, what you can call the occult. And it's not a conspiracy theory to talk about these things. It's a conspiracy fact. There is conspiracies, okay? They're not all theories. There's a rhyme and a reason. Always got to ask ourselves, it's just like detectives. Is there? Is this a theory? Am I on a witch hunt here? For I mean... You know, did this guy just, the bullet, stray bullet hit this guy, or was there a cold-blooded murder here? I mean, you know, inquiring minds want to know, and that should be all of us. So who's at fault? Well, that's why you got to delve into ancient wisdom and understand what the dark forces that are happening here, man. And you got to learn about these Bilderberger group types, the Illuminati types, the New World Order types. you got to learn about the Georgia Guidestone types, okay, the creators of the Georgia Guidestones. You've got to learn about this stuff. And you've got to do something about it. You've got to give a damn. You've got to give a damn. You've got to say, hey, I have a duty. I have an obligation here to my fellow human being. Okay? It's as simple as that. And if I don't, I'm remiss. I'm delinquent. And when I stand before my owner someday, we have to understand that we are owned creatures since we didn't create ourselves. I mean, what does any human being know about creating another human being from scratch? No DNA, not a cell. From scratch. You can't do it. So we all have to fundamentally acknowledge we are owned. We are created beings owned by whatever you want to call God, a mysterious force, a higher power. Something's going on here that boggles the mind. Okay, it's beyond mystery. It's beyond, it's, it's, it's fantastical, okay, it is. I mean, the design is obvious. This is an artist. This is the one that gave us our ability to recognize something that's beautiful from something that's not. And on and on and on, okay. All, we are made in the image and likeness of this creator, okay. And God's living through us, we're living through God, and God's growing, and we're growing with God, and God is growing with us. It's all a symbiotic thing that's going on here. It's very cosmic. And we got to learn about the nature of this creator God. This is ancient wisdom, the male and female. We, that's the nature of this monotheistic, almighty creator God is one God, and that's why the human being is broken down into genders. I mean, that's how we create, we procreate is through this method. And God made it very enjoyable. He gave us these 
feel-good drugs in our brain and in our bodies, in our system. Read all about them, the ones that are in your body. That's why I don't recommend psychedelic drugs because what those do is they release those drugs and then you attribute the wrong thing for why you feel good. You don't know. It's God that gave you those brain chemicals, the endorphins. And just read, there's a whole slew of these feel-good drugs. And he put them in our brain, in our body. And, and these drugs, like oxyto oxytocin is one of them. Uh, and he, he, may, he ensured that his commandment to go forth and be fruitful and multiply was accomplished. I mean, that's how he operates. He made it feel good. I mean, this is following God's commandments is a beautiful, good thing. And they're so simple. Like Christ said, my yoke is easy, my load is light. He said this is all we have to do is follow these two commandments and everything else would fall into place. Keep it simple. A little kid can understand this, abide by it, follow this rule of thumb. Okay, it was the golden rule. And it starts by acknowledging God, honoring God as the source of your life, your existence, your five senses, everything good you've ever experienced, not to be blamed for anything bad. God is like your divine parents, you understand? And there's no way you can imagine a better set of parents than the ones that are the great I am, God Almighty, okay, our owner. So, I mean, if you want to understand the very nature and character of God, all you have to do is be honest. You don't have to be particularly intellectual, but logical and just reasonable and say, yeah, that, that makes sense. I could sink my teeth into that idea of God. Well, then run with it. Go with it, man. Why not? He's better than we can ever imagine. So you, what do you need? What do you want? What are we after to find true, genuine happiness? And it starts there acknowledging God, loving God, for above all else. I mean, nobody can help us the way God can. They, they, we're all just human. We're fallible. We'll fail each other. We get weak. We, for all we know, somebody we're seeking help from has 10 times the demons we have, 10 times the problems we have. And we're out there pouring our heart and soul and our spirit and our mind and our emotions to them, which are all valid, good, important things to have. All our emotions are valid, but we're directing them. It's not fair for other people to deal with this stuff. We've got to take it to God. We've got to say, God, you correct me. You discipline me. You convict me. Welcome it. Don't resist it. It doesn't do any good. It's beating your head against the wall. We've got to rush into his arms and say, hold me, carry me, see me through this storm, whatever it is that you want to go through. Maybe you're happy and you want to ride that wave of 